pointer. The pointer. The pointer. Okay. It's okay. And it's a great pleasure to, to be here. It's actually my first time in contrast to uh, <laughs> Professor Lermelov. And uh, we have some uh, common things. I guess we're all older than uh, cast. <laughs> and, uh, but I wish I'm younger, because uh, when you are younger, you, you have a future. And uh, your future have a, a more, you have more things to do in the future and more hopes for, for future. So, so anyway, so this is, uh, I saw this is uh, cast the vision is uh, for 60, uh, 60 uh, anniversary and uh, actually I'm a 60 now <laughs> this year. <laughs> so so uh, so my talk is it diff a bit different from a previous one. So I guess the uh, uh, the main difference is the first is uh, his is algebra and uh, group and uh, and uh, he said that when you go to Ireland, you first bring uh, <laughs> your three mathematical concepts, you bring a group. I'm not sure we, br uh, we bring a Pungary conjecture. <laughs> 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 it's probably too heavy to carry anyway. So, <laughs> so, uh, so this is a, a rather general talk. So some people in the audience, which I actually, uh, whom I know, it's, I know it's this probably simple uh, for you. Okay, so let me start with uh, this uh, 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 Clay uh, Millennium Prize. So, so we, as we all know, in the, the first ICM in the Paris, the uh, Hilbert posted uh, the list of 23 problems uh, from uh, a broad range of mathematical fields. Like, for example, mentioned by uh, uh, in the previous talk, this uh, fifth problem in, uh, in relation with uh, groups and so on. So, so much of our progress in 20th century mathematics has, uh, has revol revolved around these problems. I guess uh, in, uh, in the 2000, inspired by this tradition, and the Clay Math Institute identified seven important and essential problems of mathematics and offered one million dollars for, for the solution of each of these problems. And uh, uh, of course, this is uh, not a uh, those, those, you shouldn't uh, say, okay, these seven problems are, are only important problems. There are many important <laughs> problems. And uh, as you, uh, you already saw in the previous talk, and uh, also, I should say, uh, one million dollars uh, means uh, quite a bit, a lot of money. But that's uh, um, you, a lot of young people here. I encourage you to work on this problem as fast as possible because uh, 18 years ago, this $1 million was worth much more than uh, <laughs> now. <laughs> uh, for, example, for example, in Peking University, for housing around Peking University, we actually had a difficulty time to hire young people because of a housing price. So, so 18 years ago, this $1 million, you can buy a 600 square meters house. Now you can only buy 60 square meters house. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I have to rush to solve this problem. Don't wait too long. <laughs> <laughs> so, so since uh, in my title it's a Pungary conjecture, so we uh, have to say it's, uh, I guess you all know the Pungary is one of these uh, greatest uh, French mathemat mathematicians in 20th century. And uh, in uh, uh, 1904, Pungary proposed a famous uh, conjecture uh, which puzzled the mathematician for, for more than 100 years. So, um, so, so the conjecture is, uh, is uh, and the Pungary conjecture is one of the most famous problems in topology. Okay? So it's, it's uh, and roughly speaking, it gives a top, um, let's see, which one is point, this is point. Oh, the other way around. Hmm? Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> this one is, uh, okay. I get pointed wrong way. So, so, so it gives the topological characterization of a simplest three-dimensional space, namely the three sphere. Okay? And uh, uh, so more precisely, the Pungary conjecture states any simply connected closed three-manifold must be homeomorphic to a 
I guess uh, some miss. <laughs> I try to clean up, I still miss something to a uh, round three sphere. Okay, so homeomorphic as I get. So so topology is one of these uh, um, these uh, uh, core mathematical fields. It differs from uh, uh, like Euclidean geometry or other uh, geometry we know, like projective geometry. So topology studies uh, the, the invariant properties and the continuous deformations. For example, we we'll look at this uh, picture, uh, this uh, motion picture here. It's, uh, you can see uh, the surface of uh, torus, the uh, surface of uh, tie, is same as the uh, surface of this cup, because you can continuously deform one into another. Okay? So, so, but this topology, when we study topology, we don't really worry about, we don't worry about the length, width, or size, or area, volume, or things like that. Okay? So yeah, you probably think, OK, we are, we are studying a things. We don't even about, worry about length or like uh, typical things in geometry to study. So what uh, is that important? Is topology important? <laughs> yes, actually it is, because uh, it studies very, very stable property of, uh, of objects, right? For example, um, even in the and in the physics, now we, we know there's a study topological property of materials. That's where we have a, a very important uh, applications to our, to in the future, or, or it's already right now, okay? So, okay, sorry, wrong way again. <laughs> so for more than 100 years, it has been a driving force, I said, in the, in the development topology to study a concrete conjecture, including a topological uh, classification of high dimensional spaces in the 60s and the study of differentiable structures on the, on the four dimensional manifolds. So these problems are not the original concrete conjecture, but they, they are uh, inspired by, uh, they were inspired by a studying of concrete conjectures. So, so uh, of course I should emphasize before I go to the next page, is a many fundamental questions remain to be open, even though we solve the Pangori conjecture. Okay. So, so to mention a few examples, and uh, the, the study of Pangori conjecture has led to a number of big progresses in the topology. For example, actually also in geometry. So, so in the 60s, in 1960, the Stephen Smell generalized it to arbitrary dimensions and uh, solve the generalized version of uh, Pangori conjecture for dimension five and up. Okay? So it's not the original Pangori conjecture, but uh, you can um, ask the same question for all dimensions. And uh, uh, in, in the eight, early 80s, the Mike Friedman solved the generalized con con uh, Pangori conjecture for, for dimension four. And in the 80s, Vinnie Thurston Proposed the generalization geometrization conjecture on three manifolds, which I will mention a little bit later. The Pangori conjecture is only a corollary of this uh, this bigger conjecture. Okay, and uh, he also verified his conjecture for large class of three manifolds. However, this class of three manifold does not include the uh, uh, sphere, the, the simplest case. Okay, it does not contain the Pangori conjecture. So. So, so now let me tell you a little bit of what the, uh, still this is a mathematical talk. So I let me tell you a bit about the, uh, what is a Pangori conjecture and the, what is a typical way of uh, a taking a, a striving to sol so solve a Pangori conjecture. So as I said, the Pangori conjecture is a, it gives a topological char characterization of three sphere. So what a special property of three sphere? So it's not possible to directly see the three-dimensional sphere because we are in this uh, three-dimensional Euclidean space. You know? So we cannot see that. So, so we, we try to understand the properties, these properties of a three-sphere, which it has by, by, by doing a, a, a analogy with uh, what is true for two spheres, which we can see, can visualize. So, now, how do we think about the two spheres? Of course, you, I guess, every, the pe people in the audience all saw the two spheres, right? And uh, so, so, 
So tooth fields, of course, there are, there are quite few ways of seeing a tooth fields. So I list two of them. One of them is, uh, is very, very classical. Is, uh, you can project tooth field with North Pole deleted to a Euclidean 2 plane. So it's called a so-called stereo projection, a stereographic projection. So you start, you stand, you <coughs> sit, uh, start from this uh, North Pole and you draw the line from North Pole connecting a point on the sphere and project to a <coughs> corresponding point on the plane. Say this plane uh, goes through uh, your equator of this sphere. Okay? So this way, in this way, you can identify, identify the two sphere with the Euclidean two plane plus one point at infinity and which correspond to this North Pole point. Okay? So, so you can think of the two sphere is uh, our ordinary Euclidean two plane plus a point at infinity, right? That's uh, that's we can think. So, so similarly, as a as a mathematician or doing mathematics, we can we can we can sit down and uh, maybe spend a few hours or some I guess uh, maybe it's, uh, uh, some people here can just spend a few minutes and uh, you can write down analytical formula to see this projection. Right? Once you write down mathematical formula to see this uh, projection, then you can say, okay, dimension doesn't matter. You can do the same thing for three dimensions. Right? So, it's, uh, so then uh, by doing a similar thing for three dimensions or even high dimensions, you can get a, a stere stereographic projection of, of a three sphere to a Euclidean three space. So then Therefore, the three sphere can be identified with a three-dimensional Euclidean space plus infinity point. Okay, so so this, uh, as I said, can be part in the mathematical rigor because you can actually write down the uh, the formulas. So 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 there's other way to see a three sphere or two sphere. I say. So how do we see a two sphere? We can start with a two to this uh, a disk, right, to a disk. And uh, red means upside, uh, I mean, so uh, let's see, a red disk or blue disk. So then, uh, then you, you can deform it to make it uh, the same sphere because the de de deform it does not change the topology, right? As I said, we, because we are only considering topolog to, to, uh, to, topological property of these uh, uh, objects, oh sorry. So, so, so then we can make it the same uh, has, uh, half spheres. So then, uh, then uh, we can glue them along the boundary. So you become a two sphere, two sphere. Okay. So, so in view of topology, if you re uh, look at this process, there are at least this process tells you the two sphere can be uh, obtained by gluing uh, two disks along their boundaries, along their boundaries. Okay, so gluing means uh, gluing means that you look at the boundary. Two boundary here is just two circles. You identify one circle, uh, I mean point on one circle with uh, other uh, the point on another circle. But this correspondence is one to one correspondence. So then you glue them together, you get uh, you get a two sphere. So now I show you two way of uh, doing this uh, this uh, um, to I to see a property of two spheres. So one is uh, I regard this as a Euclidean, space, Euclidean plane plus the infinity point, which is same as a three sphere. And the uh, third, uh, no, and the second is uh, I can think two sphere is a uh, is a uh, is a uh, two disks glued together along the along the boundary. Okay. So 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 this way you do uh, by analogy we get uh, we get uh, two description of three spheres. So one description is, uh, you, as I said before, is, uh, I think it's a three-dimensional Euclidean space plus a point at the infinity. And, uh, and in, in, in contrast to a two-dimensional case, we look at the two, we, took, we take two solid, uh, we look at the solid balls, right? Solid ball with ball fill in, okay? Then glue them along the boundary. But now this time the boundary is a two-dimensional sphere. So you glue the two solid balls along their boundary. 
you get three, three, three spheres. Three spheres. So, so, so now we came to a. So, so in the Pangori conjecture, so previously I gave you a two description of three spheres. Okay? So now, so in the Pangori conjecture, there are concepts of a simply connectedness. So what is that? It's uh, easy to see. It's uh, you look at the, look at the, sorry. Okay, that's fine. So <laughs> I guess uh, uh, my uh, being a director is uh, has advantages. Uh, you can ask the assistant to make a PP PowerPoint. <laughs> 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 okay, <laughs> so I, I provide the materials, and then she she did all thing, and uh, and uh, most of the background picture from our from our mathematical centers. Okay, <laughs> so 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 what is uh, uh, this uh, uh, simple connectedness? If you look at uh, this surface like sphere. Two sphere, right? I always use the two sphere because I can draw the picture. And I look at the torus. So what's the difference between uh, these two, or is between uh, this and that? Is uh, if you look at any loop, you take any loop, the close the curve on the two sphere, they are always can shrink to a point, can can bound the disk or bound the region, can bound the region. That's that's not true for for torus, neither this, because like this curve does not bound the things in the, on the torus, right, down torus. So, so this property, so I guess it's the same picture for, so, 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 so to, be, to be more precise, what this is, the tooth feel is simply connected since every loop on it shrinking to a point. So that is the two sphere has no holes. And all other surfaces has a holes, has a holes. And that means that does not there is a loop which cannot shrink to a point on the surface. Okay? So, so then the three sphere is uh, simply connected. I watch my time. So, so three sphere is simply connected. So like two sphere. The three sphere is simply because three sphere has no hole. Every loop on it can shrink to a point. How do I prove it? Okay. So I give you a short proof. Okay. So, so we can prove it. S prove this property by using the first uh, characterization of three sphere. Okay. So, so giving any loop on the three sphere, I want to say this can shrink to a point continuously. Okay. So we remove one point outside the giving loop. I mean, a loop is just like one dimensional. It certainly cannot occupy every point on the three sphere. So we take one point from three sphere, but not on the, this loop. So then we, we know the rest can be identified with a Euclidean three space, which has no holes. Uh, you can, well, our space we, are, we, we leave, we, are, uh, we leave does not have holes. So, so, it, so that, uh, sorry. I mean, sorry, sorry about that. So, 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 so then a given loop can shrink to a point because we just shrink this to a, in the three space, in the three space. So this shows the three sphere is simply connected, simply connected. So simply connected simply means this thing has no holes, or I mean, that on the surface means it has no holes, but in a, in a, in a, in a these uh, high dimensions, that means every loop can shrink to a point continuously. Okay. So, so now let's see how to prove a Pangori conjecture. So Pangori conjecture says says uh, this. Uh, <coughs> we just prove three sphere is simply connected. Okay. So until the Pangori conjecture says the converse is also true. So namely, if I give you a three space, three dimensional space, which has no holes, that means you can, you can shrink every loop to a, to a point, then it must be a three sphere. It must be homeomorphic to a three sphere, or it's a, has, there's a one-to-one -one correspondence from this giving three space to a three sphere. Three sphere. Okay. So, so for 100 years, it's, it's intuitively that it must be true somehow. 
you know, how can you imagine a three-dimensional space which is simply connected, which is not three sphere? That's probably Pangori <laughs> guessed. Okay, but uh, but uh, as I as you can see, things things are more complicated than uh, this. Okay, so. So for 100 years, how did topologists try to prove a Pangori conjecture? What is a traditional approach? Okay. So I want to give you a, in a, in a long, rigorous way to see how this is done. Give you some ideas, okay, how this is done. And uh, uh, this approach, traditional approach, may still work some days. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, as uh, in the, uh, <coughs> Professor Zemelov mentioned in the previous uh, talk, Sometimes a proof is more important than a result. So even you make this approach, approach work is still wonderful. Okay. <laughs> so so let's start with surface again. Okay. The surface is two-dimensional because it's uh, clearly it uh, only has two freedoms, right? A, and, and each locally at least each point can be the, the can be determined by two numbers that's called coordinates. Okay? So, so, so each of these surfaces sits in the three space. Like each of surface happens to be like this torus, and this is uh, with three handles, right? And uh, so, 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 so then what we can see in the three space and is a boundary of three dimensional object. So basically what you do, you can fill in, in, in fill in things, uh, fill in the stuff in the interior become a solid uh, things. Once it becomes solid things, we call it a solid handle body. Okay? For example, this uh, uh, torus here, like uh, tie, you just imagine you feel in the air. air. It's, a, it's a solid. It's not a surface. It's three-dimensional. Okay? And the three-dimensional ball, solid ball, is a three-dimensional. It's a, it's, a it's, a, it's a handle body. Okay? So the genius of hand, uh, surface uh, or is a uh, you say uh, it's a genius of solid handle body. It's the same thing. It simply is a number of holes. For example, here is a genius one. So it's a genius one handle body. Okay. So here is a three holes. That's a th three. Uh, I mean, the genius is three. Here is a three two. It's a genius three. Okay. So so these two actually are the same. This, but only the, the, they they are made differently. So here you can start with three sphere. You Attach three handles. Okay, so 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 we call the handle body. Handle body. Okay. So second, the characterization of a three sphere shows uh, the three sphere can be obtained by by gluing uh, two balls along their boundary. In the in the in the mathematics or in the in the language topologist, the low dimension topologist, this this is called. Uh, a genius zero hand, handle body decomposition. So it's a handle body decomposition of three sphere. So what is a handle body decomposition? Simply means you are giving a three space, you can somehow you, are, you, you can cut into, into two pieces, two handle, uh, two handle bodies, and the two handle bodies are, are, are have a same genius, the same handle body, same gen handle body or same genius. Okay? So, so here you get a genius zero handle body decomposition. And in fact, there is a deep theorem in the mathematics. So it looks very simple, right? You can look at the uh, three space. You say, say uh, anyway, let me re redo it. So a theorem in the uh, mathematics states every three space Say without the boundary, that's some uh, standard uh, assumption. Okay, don't, I don't want two, two, two bad things. So assume smooth. So can be represented by taking uh, two copies of solid uh, handle bodies of same genus and uh, gluing and gluing the entire boundary together. So you start with two handle uh, two handle bodies of same genus. You glue them along their boundary because their boundary is the same, the surface of same genus, and you find the identification. You glue them together, you get a three space. It turns out every three space can be produced in this way. Okay, and you imagine, 
you might think, okay, that seems to be simple. Start with two handle body. As every, that's uh, rather simple. You can see them in the in the in the Euclidean space, and uh, you glue them, <coughs> and you get all the three space. You imagine <coughs> it seems to be not so many three spaces, right? And uh, you probably can, can go through the list, like uh, like librarian or whatever. So. And see, okay, this is uh, not three field. That's not three field. And uh, you, uh, maybe by end of the week, you figure out that's nothing else can be a three field, right? So except the simply connected one. So, so, so that's uh, so called. Uh, that's what you think. Actually, that's the approach. That's the kind of approach. And so the approach is uh, for 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 long time. The topologists try to. Uh, find the handle body decomposition of a three space, which is simply connected. But, uh, and, uh, and uh, then you want to see, using this handle body decomposition to see uh, it has to be a three sphere if it's simply connected. But then the problem is, uh, is uh, the decomposition is not unique. Decomposition is not unique. Uh, giving three space may have handle body decomposition of different uh, genera. Okay? So, so maybe I uh, skip this. I show you a maybe concrete way of uh, seeing this decomposition. This is very intuitive, right? So, so you look at this uh, S three. That's a three. That's a mathematical symbol for for three sphere. And uh, we know it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a has a, de a genus zero handle body decomposition. Namely, you can have uh, two solid balls. You glue them together along the boundary, right? That's already. No, that's the second characterization of a three sphere. Now I do some simple surgery. Okay, you take first uh, ball and you dig out, uh, cut out a piece like this, like a solid cylinder. Okay, you cut out, uh, you <coughs> drill uh, the hole, and uh, and uh, of course this process is always a one-to-one -one process. Now then. What do you do? You bend this, you bend this, and this, this is you come here, you didn't, do, you didn't do anything from this step to that step. You have uh, these three ball with a hole, with a cylindrical hole. And then you bend this, and, uh, and uh, you attach this to these second balls. So namely, you, you get a torus, because you, like, uh, you have a ball, and they attach your handles, become a solid uh, torus. Okay, so so and of then you can also see, you you, you deform this. You can see uh, this is uh, is also a uh, no. You 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 can deform this a little bit. It looks like not like this, but you can somehow s s smooth deform this and uh, like smoothing these colors here and smoothing colors here. So you can see uh, these things here, the three ball with one cylindrical hole is also a torus. So this way you can see, you see uh, by doing this, you can see uh, the three sphere has the genus one handle body compositions, right? So I start with genus zero. I dig out doing this process, I get a genus one, three handle decompositions. And you can continue to do this. Get a, get a genus two, or genus three, and so on. Okay, so so <coughs> so you so three sphere. The conclusion here is a three sphere may have a handle body composition of a higher genus, higher genus. Okay, so so handle body composition is not unique, even though this is a, this is a <coughs> and and where it looks like very simple and this. Uh, this surgery process or this operational process. Okay, so 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 I said we have this. So this is another picture. This is genus two uh, uh, handle body decomposition. Okay, I, I didn't tell you how to do it, but uh, you can repeat what uh, I did before. You draw draw a hole in a, in a, in in other parts of uh, uh, what left in on the three uh, three balls. Okay, so. So, so now the structure of a high genius surface, the structure of a surfaces of high genius, is more complicated than that of two spheres, 
Because if you do a three, hand, uh, the handle body decomposition for hygienous, the, the surface you need to glue. You have two handle body, you want to glue. The surface is also hygienous. And uh, this hygienous surface has uh, much more complicated structures. And uh, there are many ways of uh, different way of gluing them together. So not um, why I say many ways, of course, uh, even two sphere, you, you can say there are many ways. But uh, it turns out to topologically, they are all same. It's only one way. But for hygienists, you might have different uh, topological way of uh, identifying them. Okay. So, so, so this way, as I said, so it's a. Uh, so, so even though you can giving a three sphere, you can find the different uh, of uh, handle body compositions, but other way around, is hard to see. Okay. If I give you a, a give you a simply connect space, you say I always have a simple handle body composition, but that does not tell you much because every space has a three has a, a handle body decompositions. So 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 what is a way to get over this difficulty or solve this problem? Is a so 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 how so I already said there's a. <coughs> And this is a unique way of for, for genius zero. So, so if we can find the method, right? We already said, the, if we, if you find the genius zero uh, handle body composition, then you are done. You are done. So, so it. So if I can find the method, which can decompose a simply connected three space into into a three dimensional balls, it must be a three sphere. So for 100 years or around 100 years, the topologist try without success to find such a method. So you want to find the method, you can bound the genius of, a, uh, you, you want to find a way of doing a decomposition, handle body decomposition, such that you can control the genius, control genius. Actually, when I was a student, that's in the early 80s, uh, not in the 80, middle of 80s, and uh, this, the, the we in uh, this uh, Professor Yao's seminar, and uh, he he mentioned the way of uh, using a, a minimum surface to try to bound the genus, say up to five genus five. But if you can if you, if you can bound the genus up to two, topology already know how to do finish the rest. But this uh, this uh, uh, bounding a genus is a difficult thing, and. Uh, and so many people tried. Many people. Tried. I will mention more later in a moment. So, so, so mathematician who had uh, tried on Pangori conjecture for for long time, right? The the oldest the famous mathematician who studied the Pangori conjecture may have been a, a white hat. Okay, in the nineteen thirties, he claimed to have a proof. Soon after, he found the problem. I found the gap okay, in his proof and withdrew it. But however, in his, this process, he found an interesting example of simply connected, simply connected, non-compact, it's not uh, uh, compact, not close, three space, which is not homeomorphic to three dimensional Euclidean space. Okay? So, so if you think uh, this, uh, so if, if uh, uh, you, three space, as I proved a moment ago, Euclidean space is simply connected. But if you look at a long compact space which is simply connected, it's not necessarily Euclidean space. Okay? So, so, but, uh, so, so closeness is also important here. Okay? <laughs> so in the 50s or 60s and, uh, of the last century, the many famous mathematicians also tried this. I just mentioned a few, a few people. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and the, the, the including, uh, for example, I mentioned uh, Sosten, right? Sosten is uh, uh, give this uh, big program, so called geometrization conjecture, which I will say a bit more later. So among them, I, I mention I want to mention uh, this uh, Papa. Okay, and, uh, he's, uh, he's, uh, he was a Greek mathematician, and uh, he he came to Princeton in 1948. Then he could he found out he couldn't go back to Greek because uh, actually he he is this is. Uh, very interesting person, and uh, 
And uh, he actually, in the Second World War, he was a guerrilla and uh, fighting f against the uh, Nazis. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, maybe because of that, he was uh, maybe um, fall into the wrong side of uh, <laughs> political factors. And uh, so, so he was banned f from returning to a Greek. So Greece. So, so, so then he st stayed in Princeton for a long time until he died. And, uh, and uh, he, he tried, uh, um, since early 60s, he, he, he started to study uh, Punguri conjecture until he died of cancer in 1976. So he, I, was, I heard his life was very, for, for more than 10 years or 15 years, his life was so very regular. Okay. It's basically every day doing the same thing. So went to a, went to a, coffee place for breakfast and went to office, listening to a music and uh, solving a Pangori conjecture. So for, for many, many years. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, nevertheless, he, he, in this process, he actually proved uh, quite a few important uh, theorems. So his, uh, his efforts was not completely useless, right? He proved a uh, dilemma, closed the loop theorem and the sphere theorem. And because of this, he was awarded the first Webelin Prize in the 19. 64. Okay. So, so, <coughs> so, so now eventually the solution of Pangori conjecture relies on the methods from a differential geometry, at least uh, no, as I said, is uh, the, the solution so far. Okay. So, and the geometric analysis. So it's, uh, it's, it's long traditional to a topologist. Okay. So it used the remaining metrics and the curvatures which were introduced in the, uh, in the 1860s by the uh, 1850s, uh, middle of 18, uh, 19th century by Riemann. Okay. So, so, so what Riemann noticed is uh, first, on any space, one can impose a structure for measuring angles and lengths. He called a matrix. So such a space, Structure is called the Riemannian matrix. Okay, so so locally speaking, this Riemannian matrix is simply is a is a function of a matrices with which are positive definite matrices. Okay, so 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 there are, however, there are infinitely huge number of uh, Riemannian matrix on a given space. So you have you have given a space there are so many matrix, and uh, you you you. <coughs> You, you, it's hard to use w like uh, w one of them. Okay, so so uh, for 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 many many years, at least the last sixty or seventy years, in the differential geometry, we want to study uh, things which is uh, trying to find the metric with uh, good properties, which I I'm not going to specify the properties since uh, today's. Uh, public talk. Okay. You can come to my talk tomorrow, you can uh, get more information. So, <laughs> so, so we pre uh, prescribe the properties, for example, like curvature to be nice and so on. Okay. So, so one of these properties is, uh, I shouldn't say one, but I mean this property are all described by a curvature, property of curvatures. So what curvature measures how space is curved is intrinsic, it's intrinsic. So one of these Riemann's uh, findings, which is very, very important in the geometry, is, uh, is uh, he found the curvature is uh, intrinsic. Because before him, and the curvature defined in terms of principal curvature is kind of extrinsic, then uh, the certain curvature is, uh, is, uh, uh, is, uh, <coughs> uh, is uh, intrinsic, that's the so-called Gauss theorem. But then the Riemann comes and says, uh, we actually can define a curvature intrinsically. Okay, so 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 uh, so curvature measures how space is curved, even though you cannot see this space. And that's that's uh, for example our and um, our space, in strictly speaking, is curved has a curvature because of gravity, because of gravity. Special the space around a big star like the sun is curved. It's curved, right? It's not a it's Euclidean space. So so. So in high dimensions, 
So in the in the one dimension, you can see actually in one dimension intrinsically there's no curvature. Everything is uh, you can stretch to line, even it's a curve. Okay, but in surface like sphere has a has a curvature. Okay, it's not you cannot flatten them without breaking the surface. So in high dimensions the curvature is much more complicated. So every basically two direction has a curvature. So yeah, the curvature depends on the directions. Okay, so. Riemann showed, locally at least, there is uh, only one, con this is the only quantity intrinsically associated with the metric. For example, a small piece of uh, n-dimensional space can be flattened to a piece of Euclidean space if and only if curvature is zero. Okay, if a curvature, if a curvature is not zero, you can never make it like a, um, like a Euclidean piece without uh, breaking it, without breaking it, okay? So, so, so uh, among, among these curvature things, there is a related simply, simplified curvature called the Ricci curvature, which measures deviation of volume form on the curved space from Euclidean one. I guess uh, if you go to calculus, we do a multiple calculus, you never worry about the volume form because uh, it's flat. Every point of the volume form, you do an integration, it's, uh, it's, uh, it doesn't matter where, where you do an integration. But uh, in, uh, when the space is curved, the volume form not, is not necessarily the same from, from one point to another point. Okay? So, so, so this, sim this sim simple part, simpler part of curvature is uh, given by Ricci curvature. Okay? So, so Thurston conjecture says, so Thurston so generation conjecture says uh, three-dimensional spaces can be cut, uh, cut up in a, a natural way into a pieces which admit a specially nice matrix, namely the matrix with constant rich curvature. So at also this matrix called, called Einstein matrix because uh, they satisfy, uh, they are solution of Einstein equations. Okay? They are solution of Einstein but it's a static solutions. So, so this suggests a different approach to a Pangray conjecture and indeed to finding at least all uh, I guess to list all the three dimensional spaces, the, namely construct the nice remaining metric by analytic dif and the differential geometrical methods. Okay. So, so if you find, the, for example, if you find the, in the three space, Susan Conjecture says if you can find the, the metric with constant rich curvature, you are done. If, for example, if you want on the simply connected the three space, if you find the metric with constant curvature, or constant rich curvature, you know it has to be a three sphere. Has to be a three sphere. So, so then it turns the problem into an analytical problem. Okay, analytical problem. So, or different geometrical problem. So, so in 1982, the Ricci Hyman introduced the Ricci flow. So this provides a way of, uh, of uh, solving, uh, to find a metric with uh, rich, constant rich curvature. So, so, so you, what you do is, it's not a heat equation. This is a, a heat equation, a version of heat equation. Namely, you, you, you put a heat source here, and the gradually it become a homogeneous. And uh, along this flow, sorry, it's a, an, along this flow, it's a, uh, you evolve, eventually you can, um, if, uh, if, if you can solve this equation, and find a good solution, then uh, eventually you can prove a generalization conjecture. Okay. So, so, however, life is not that simple because this equation is highly nonlinear and uh, it develops singularities. And uh, studying a singularities is a, uh, is uh, a, <coughs> uh, so uh, let, me, let me mention a contribution of Hamilton because it's recorded, I have to be fair to everyone. So, <laughs> So having established the analytic foundation for Ricci flow and proposed a program towards solving this generalization conjecture system for three manifolds, and he also solved the Pangori conjecture and certain curvature conditions. Okay. So if you assume certain curvature conditions initially, you can do it. But he was unable to overcome some cru crucial difficulties, namely to study, as I mentioned already, because the equation is nonlinear, you need to worry about singularity. You need to analyze singularities and understand the topological nature of singularities. So, so, uh, so uh, we all know now 
in the two in the two two o two, the uh, paramount uh, post post the preprint online and uh, and uh, and and uh, he uh, he proposed uh, he posted actually a total three preprints and in this uh, he outlined the proof of Pangori conjecture as well as the Susan generalization conjectures. Okay, so so <coughs> so the crucial. So, crucial advance of Hermann is to prove the finite time singularities can form only along the two spheres. And uh, the, th therefore, the, the change in the topology can be completely understood. So, so, so in, in one sentence, the, the, the punchline is that uh, he understood the singularities, top topological nature of singularities. Okay. And, uh, and after understanding that, and uh, Perron was able to construct a so-called generalized solution of a Ricci flow, and uh, or, or also referred as a, as a Ricci flow with surgery for all the time and any initial data. And then, then using a minimax principle or minimal surface theory, outlining a proof of uh, Ricci flow with surgery becomes uh, extinct and uh, then to solve the Pangori conjecture. So because of time, I go a little bit faster here now. So, so <coughs> So, I mean, Perman didn't provide uh, all, all the details, and the others hoped, so it's make a uh, uh, difficulty to, to check. So it uh, it's took quite a few years, and uh, to 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 eventually fill in the necessary details of uh, proof of hungry conjectures. Okay, there were some small gaps, but uh, it could be fixed. And uh, and uh, then uh, to say here is I should mention a. Uh, uh, it's uh, the solution of Perman used uh, many important advances in a differential geometry in the last 50 years. So it's uh, it's uh, it's actual accumulation of uh, of uh, uh, of uh, a, a differential geometry. For example, to mention a few, the classification of non-negative curved spaces that was like a Chigar and so on in the 60s, in later 60s. That's a very in, plays a very important role in his solution. And the compactness uh, is the remaining geometry is kind of a uh, uh, compact theory. And the Halak type estimate of heat equations, like the uh, uh, type, okay? and also collapsing theory for spaces with curvature bounded uh, from below. So this is uh, more from uh, uh, what Perman himself studied in the 90s, and uh, also Gromov and, uh, <coughs> and the Russian school. Okay? And the theory of minimum surfaces. That uh, looks like completely different uh, subjects, but uh, it, it needs to be used in the, in the many places. Okay. So, so the proof of geometrization conjecture needs some more efforts. Actually, and so in, people thought it was, uh, was done, actually was claimed uh, in the 2007 or 2006, but actually was not true. This, uh, it's uh, in the to, to, to 2012, the Rich Baumler, he my former student at the Princeton, and now he's at Berkeley, found the unsolved technical issue in the proof of Parma, which is not, does, it did, does, didn't affect the Pangori conjecture, but affect the geometrization conjecture. And, uh, and uh, he, he also feel, uh, for, provide the detailed proof. So luckily, by ex exploring a Parma's method, and the bomber solved this problem. And actually, furthermore, he proved a refined version of geometrization conjecture. It's, a, it's actually become a purely differential geometric thing. Okay? And uh, you probably, if you are interested, I will take a little bit more in this, uh, talk, talk a bit more tomorrow. And, uh, and uh, this philosophy is, 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 uh, can, go, can be studied also in other uh, this approach can be also used in other problems. Okay, so, 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 so let me say a few words here. So actually, um, as uh, was in uh, said at the beginning, so so a lot of people involved in uh, in uh, in uh, this uh, studying a Pangori conjecture actually spend some time in Princeton. Okay. So, <laughs> so uh, for example, Rich Bumble was a student, former student in Princeton, and uh, I guess uh, 
So Thurston was also worked in Princeton for many years. So <coughs> and uh, White Hat and uh, Papa and uh, <laughs> and uh, Richard Hamilton was a former student of Ham Princeton too. But I guess uh, in the end, Perman solved the problem. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway, so, uh, so Jeff Chico is also from Princeton. So it's a lot of, uh, develop a lot of uh, tools to, to make this to be true. Okay. And <coughs> so in a few, one thing, maybe I mentioned uh, uh, two big problems before I finish. The first is uh, Zola Michael Friedman solve the four-dimensional generalized Pankery conjecture, we do not know if there is an exotic force field. So what does that mean, force field? So this means a smooth space, which is homeomorphic, but not diffeomorphic to standard force field. So this is so-called a smooth four-dimensional four Pankery conjecture, which is still open. Okay? So, so this is actually was uh, in 1957, uh, uh, John Miro, he was a uh, former student of Princeton too, found uh, 28 exotic uh, seventh fields, which are not difficult to standard seventh field. So when the dimension high, which this does not happen in dimension three, but happens in dimension, high dimensions, <coughs> on the same space, topological space, topologically the same, but there are different ways of doing a uh, calculus, okay, doing a uh, there are different differentiable structure, or in roughly speaking, it's different way of doing a calculus, okay? So which are not equivalent to each other. So, so it turns out three-dimensional, okay, four-dimensional case is, uh, is, uh, is, op is still open, okay? So, 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 so there might be a differential geometric way of doing that. And uh, is, so the big question is, uh, is there a differential geometric method to solve a smooth 4D Pangori conjecture, such as uh, geometric flow, which plays the role as a Ricci flow in dimension three. Okay, it's known, it's known, no exact force field admits the self dual matrix. So in the four dimensions, there's a self duality because the structure group S O four can be decomposed as a pro almost as a product essential product of two S O three. So there's a self dual structures which are used in young mills and so on. But if you apply these two metrics, if you find a way to constructing a metric of this type, you can solve, you, can, you, you at least have an approach to this problem. So, for, uh, so again, it's a, it's, a, it's a geometric flow for solving a self dual equations, which is, uh, uh, we don't know yet. There are some attempts, but uh, no good things. But if uh, for synthetic uh, manifolds, it's a, uh, a big class of uh, four manifolds. Then we, uh, Jeff Schitz and I, and my f former postdoc, in induced, in introduced a new curvature flow, which preserves synthetic structure, which might be, be able, it, I believe it can be used to study a synthetic uh, four manifolds, okay? like a uh, rich flow bit in the three dimensions. So, so also, um, you can also study uh, this uh, so-called analytic minimal model program was initiated by myself and together in the, uh, 2002, and actually in my ICM talk in the 2002. So, 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 so it aims at the classifying algebraic space, just like uh, this uh, Thurston's uh, geometric legend conjecture tried to classify three manifolds. And uh, you, it, uses, uh, it can use the Ricci flow and the main abstract Main problem is still uh, understand the five times singularity, which corresponds to a flips in algebraic geometry. So, 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 so there are still this uh, <coughs> this method, or at least uh, this approach by using a uh, geometric uh, flows or geometric methods to study a uh, space of a different category, is still a big problem, and uh, it. Uh, and uh, I think there are still many things to do. And so anyway, I stop here. Thank you. <laughs>